Greetings everyone, and or should I say Guten Tag, since we're in Germany. Of course this is the uh, Frankfurt U-Bahn, and today we're currently at Ginheim Station, and there's another U-1 service pulling in. Indeed, that's what we'll, we're about to embark on, if I can get the... I'm trying to get this uh, side window open. Hmm, doesn't seem that I can. Anyway, uh, today we're driving the... Siemens U4 Wagen, as they call it, uh, in Frankfurt, but I think, well, it just looks like a multiple unit to me, albeit a very short one. Of course, got to set this thing up properly, and I've driven in these U-Bahn trains enough times to know off by heart how to set them up. So, I th what is it? Um, just trying to reset it. So it's. You press E to activate the driver's cab, so presumably that's like putting in the master key on an English train. Then it's P to put the battery on, and as you can see that's switched on all the uh, instrument lights. Oh, and uh, V for the interior lights. Then the... Then one of the... It's like this more straight brackets key. Straighter brackets. It's not. It's not like... It's not like the curved brackets that you get when you press shift 9 or shift 0. There's that one for the pantograph, and then one for the main switch. Now, considering that this is like a U-Bahn system with a lot of underground sections, I'm surprised that it uses overhead wires, because you've got systems like Berlin, uh, which use third rail. Mind you, that's more of a proper U-Bahn system than this one. Up at the top of the screen, there's these there's these displays with all the numbers and like what destinations they correspond to. So the ones that we need, just not looking, the ones we need is seven one one and seven one two. Still, I've never really gotten used to these camera angles on this train. So this system here is what's called IBIS, like I B I S, but I can't remember what that's short for. It's essentially the system, uh, the thing you have to use to set up the automatic announcements. And it, to start off with, you meant to enter a random, well, some kind of like cruise service number, I think. But I'm just going to enter a random. Okay, no, I'm going to enter random number of 25. And then for this linear or line, that's you have to like, you have to do like e press either 91 or, or 91 to 99. And in this case, we're going to do 91. Which, if you go to the out, go to the outside, it now says U1. Actually, I think I'll get the doors open while I'm sitting here blabbering. So at least let the passengers on. And then we wait. Hold on. I don't know if anyone else has noticed this, but I've just seen. You can just about see it. Cause I'm, I think I've got the cursor enabled. That date there, just below the 91, that says, I think it's like the 5th of April 2022, which is the same day that I'm recording this video, which is a bit odd, I wouldn't have thought the game would be that smart. Anyway, so, unless that's just the date that the scenario is set to, I don't know, but anyway, next is, next is the option where we have to set up the, enter the codes for the start and end station. Which I've just done, and then you go press the button under the arrow, and then it's got all the uh, announcements programmed. It's actually relatively easy once you get the hang of it. Should make for a good screenshot. Now I've made loads of scenarios for this route in the past, but I've never been able to figure out how to set up the destination displays for the AI traffic. So, and then that so whoever made this scenario, because it's it's one I got from Steam Workshop. Yeah, whoever made it is certainly much better in that regard. Right, now I'll put the uh, windscreen wipers on, which is something I've realised that I've neglected to do all this time, and now we'll get moving. Now being uh, metro units, or like units for high density metro services, you would expect the acceleration to be incredibly fast, and today is no exception. And uh, this first section of you one that we're on is uh, also shared by line U9 and we might see a U9 service at some point I'm not sure but uh, 
that line is run with uh, only two car trains, but I think U1 typically uses six car consists. Nächste Station, Niederpark. Ausstieg in Fahrtrichtung rechts. Bitte achten Sie auf die Stufe zwischen dem Zug und dem Bahnsteig. Please mind the step between the train and the platform. Now, from memory, there's only like six stations on this route that also do like full English announcements instead of that one where it just says, please mind the gap. And those six stations are not on this route. They are actually on the, I think, at the west end of line U4, uh, specifically between Bockenheimer Warte and Konstabelwache. And that section is partly shared with line U5. Right, so, this is of course Niederpark. Now, as much as I like this route, one problem I've always had with it is, I think this is meant to be like a dual carriageway along here that's like split, obviously split by the railway. But, um, yeah, I've, I've always found that there's barely any traffic on these roads. Like, once we get south of Hedernheim, you'll see what I mean. Because this, I mean, this U-Bahn system in Frankfurt am Main has always fascinated me because it's not really what you would expect from like an underground metro system. Nächste Station, Ulmerstadt. Umsteigenmöglichkeit zur Buslinie 60. Ausstieg in Fahrtrichtung rechts. And what I mean by like... Bitte achten Sie auf die Stufe zwischen dem Zug und dem Bahnsteig. Please mind the step between the train and the platform. And what I mean by like, not what you would expect from a typical U-Bahn or underground system, is it's um... Wait, that was an eight-car consist on going back towards Ginheim, but anyway. So... This system is quite unusual for a U-Bahn or just any underground metro I might, but at least that's the way I see it, because normally with these kinds of systems you would expect them to just run on third rail, or in the case of the London Underground, by a four rail system, not overhead wires. So why this one in Frankfurt uses overhead wires, I honestly don't know. If, if anything, I don't really know too much about the history of this network, aside from the fact that the first section of it, which was between Hauptwacher and Nordwestzentrum, opened in 1968, and that the most recent additions to the network, which were lines U8 and U9, started running in 2010, and I think they were both launched to serve the Goethe University campus up at Riedberg. Indeed, line U8 is, well, terminates at Riedberg, having started at Südbahnhof, while U9 is the strange little route from uh, Nieder-Eschbach to Ginheim. And trying to get a stop in the right place here. And um, another unusual aspect of this network is the fact that sometimes, like especially when you're out in the hangabout, okay this must be pretty powerful rain if it's able to phase through the ceiling. So anyway, this makes for a decent angle I think. Yeah, because you get some sections that um, like underground, like what we're about to go into, but you also have on a bit. Of, there's a bit of U, line U5 where you're actually running in the street, like a, like a tram. But th this system here is distinctly different from a conventional tram, as far as I'm concerned. Even though to me these trains still look quite a bit like a tram. But the thing with that is that um, what so what am I saying? So. It, Nächste Station, Nordwestzentrum. Umsteigemöglichkeit zu den Buslinien 29, 60 und 72 sowie zu den Regionalbussen. Ausstieg in Fahrtrichtung rechts. As I was saying, so besides these underground sections, I mean you can't really call it, I don't think you could really call it a U-Bahn without having any underground sections, but what I'm saying is that besides the underground sections, you've also got... Uh, it's, all, it's a mix of that as well as... Almost like running in the countryside once you get far enough out from the city on lines 
U3 and U8. Indeed, U9, uh, that, that line does not go into the centre of Frankfurt at all. And it's the only w line on the network that doesn't do that. Oh, slight issue there. So, so, a lot of the sections above ground, like when you're in the city, more or less, is... Um, is a curious because it's where because the railway is essentially on its own se uh, segregated right of way. I mean, indeed, when we, and once we get past uh, Hedenheim, you'll see that it's just running on its own, like segregated double track alignment, with uh, two lanes of two lanes of road on each side. And yeah, it really is just um, quite a, fa a very fascinating network. Just the idea that. If, say, you're driving on like line U3, for example, you could start underground in a station that's just south of the, just south of, I think, the Mine River, in more or less the centre of Frankfurt, and then by the end of the line, you're over about 20 kilometres away, and at a, at a tiny little station, seemingly in the middle of nowhere. Because uh, line U3 runs to Oberursel Hohemark, although I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. Nächste Station, Heddenheimer Landstraße. Sie befinden sich in einem Zug der Linie U1. Zur Weiterfahrt in Richtung Niedereschbach mit der Linie U9 bitte hier umsteigen. Ausstieg in Fahrtrichtung rechts. And uh, U3 is also the longest line on the U-Bahn. Um, as for this line that we're on today, which is of course U1, it's, whilst it may not seem all that interesting, indeed that's the way I've usually seen it, it's the only line on the network that actually has two underground sections. Because as we've just come through the first one, but then the normal underground section, uh, we start that starts at uh, Dornbusch, which is, just looking at my notes, it's... Uh, five stations down from Heddenheim and then once we go once we leave Dornbusch we'll go underground and stay there stay below stay underground all the way to Sudbahnhof if anything it kind of reminds me of uh, line U6 which originally was uh, Ostbahnhof to Heerstrasse but then it got sw the, then the terminus got swapped over with U7 so U6 now just goes from Ostbahnhof to uh, Halsen. And that line, I think, might be the only other one on the net. I think it's like lines U1, U2, U3, U6, and U8. Actually, come to think of it, U5. And I just realized most of the terminus stations on this network are, uh, a lot of them, especially the ones in the city, are um, underground. Well, certainly the U-Bahn platforms for those stations, anyway. Nächste Station. And scenes like this, well, especially with the dodgy bridge reflection, um, these kinds of scenes where you're just cruising, cruising through the through like heavily wooded area, it's just not the sort of thing but it's the sort of thing I would never have expected from like an underground such metro system and uh, I think ever since uh, this is definitely one of the uh, be I think it's definitely one of the best routes in train simulator even though it can get somewhat boring sometimes and I've had and I can say that mainly because I've had plenty of experience on it because I bought it from I remember I bought it from the uh, Just Trains website I think towards the end of 2018, because I remember playing on this route uh, whilst I was like on holiday in New Plymouth. Might have been around that time, and uh, yeah, and even back then I was uh, playing on it quite often. I think the first journey I ever did on this route was from was on line U8 from Sudbahnhof to Riedberg. Indeed, that uh, consist that I was driving that day was quite similar to what I've got this time. Except I think in that instance it was uh, two of the U5 sets and a U4 at the back. 
and of course one of the other the other thing about these un these different units is that they sound quite different as well although I think my pref my preferred motive power when driving on this route has always been the U5 Nächste Station Heddenheim Umsteigemöglichkeit zur U-Bahnlinie U2 in Richtung Bad Homburg-Gonzenheim vom gegenüberliegenden Bahnsteig sowie zur Buslinie 60 Ausstieg in Fahrtrichtung rechts And this is of course the, dep the main depot for I think lines U1, U2, U3 and U8 and possibly U9 as well Indeed there's another train and that is saying it's U1 to Ginheim that looked like it was all U4s. As we pull in, I'll just um, bring the camera back here so you can hear what the U5 sounds like compared to the U4s. And if I'm not mistaken, these U5s are the newest rolling stock on the system. So I think they first entered service in 2008. In fact, I'm pretty sure. I'm also pretty sure that they're part of the Bombardier Flexity Swift family. And as I recall saying at the start, these U4s are Siemens products. What's curious is that um, whilst the majority of these units are just simply two-car sets, these U you can also get these U5s in what's technically a four-car consist. Except in that instance, it's really just uh, two, uh, two, two car units with a, with only one cab each coupled together. But aside from that, they pretty much look the same as the two, as the standard two car version. Notably, they're also articulated. So what is this? Okay, I'm not entirely sure what this uh, GU and the end of the date for June thirteenth, twenty thirteen is uh, is all about. I dare say someone who's more knowledgeable in the Frankfurt U-Bahn might might probably know will probably know what that means. As for this uh, VGF branding, uh, that I believe is the abbreviation for the name of this public transport agency in Frankfurt, and I think I know how to pronounce this, and I'll give it a shot. It's about to get rudely interrupted. <laughs> That's U2 oh, to Tanita Eschbach. So that's a short, technically a short form service because U2, of course, actually terminates at uh, Bad Homburg Gonsenheim, or as I keep wanting to call it, Bad Homburg Gonsoheim, in reference to the character to a character from the Muppets. But as I was about to say, uh, that name for the public transport agency—that's not it. Where is it? <laughs> yeah, it says, I think that's Verkos Gesellschaft Frankfurt am Main. I'm not entirely sure what that means, but I mean like the Verkers Gesellschaft. Anyway, it's time to get moving again. With the next stop being Weisserstein. <coughs> Excuse me. The next stop being Weisserstein. I like this little bit of detail on the station sign where it tells you uh, which which U uh, U-Bahn lines serve the station. Although I'm not sure what Schwimmbad means. This car here. I mean, I don't know what type it is, of course, but to me it looks like a VW Beetle. Or one of those old, or like a Morris Minor. But yeah, I'm not really. I, I know what. I know this. I know. I am familiar with some types of cars, but obviously not all of them. Nächste Station, Weißerstein. Umsteigemöglichkeit zur S-Bahnlinie S6 sowie zu den Buslinien 63, 66 und 69. Ausstieg in Fahrtrichtung rechts. Now one of the things I picked up from that announcement was the lady saying that this is the station where you can change for an S-Bahn service. And I think the specific line she mentioned was S6. Now I don't really know anything about the S-Bahn lines in Frankfurt. But I do know that there is another route in Train Simulator that includes, I think it's like S, the lines S5 and S6, and it's essentially another perspective on uh, commuter operations in the city. Indeed, uh, it's it, the, both of those lines. Well, I think all of all but one of the S-Bahn Rhein Main services run through 
that city, or the, what is essentially the Frankfurt City Tunnel, and indeed, the, or the only one that doesn't, I believe, is S, is line S7, which terminates at the high-level platforms at Frankfurt Hauptbahnhof. And uh, those, the, the, the specific stations I'm referring to, uh, where, you, well, there's two stations in particular on that on that uh, underground S-Bahn section, where they, where you can essentially have uh, direct, semi-direct interchange with the U-Bahn and they are Hauptwache and Konstablerwache but the only stations that or the only uh, uh, the, uh, sorry, um, the only cases where we'll see or the only lines that you can drive on where you actually get to run alongside the S-Bahn services are lines U6 and U7 and of course whilst uh, those two, whilst Hauptwache and Konstablerwache are each served by other. Nächste Station, Lindenbaum. Ausstieg in Fahrtrichtung rechts. U-Bahn lines, uh, of course, will be going on to it. Well, they all, they all serve different platforms, but obviously it's still at the same station. And what's that service? That's. Can't read it too well, but I think that's another. I think that was another U1 to Ginheim. Now this section that we're currently on is, I think it's like the busiest on the whole network, even though in my opinion it's perhaps the most boring. And I th the reason why it's so busy is because it's, well it's in real life at least, <coughs> excuse me, is because it's served by, the f by four lines. And I think at like peak times, the frequency of the service can get so intense that the, that there'll be like a train every two to four minutes which is insane to me but it's I suppose it's what you would expect from a metro network I mean in a way it's sort of like I guess the London Underground where they don't necessarily publish timetables in the conventional sense and that sort of system operates mainly on a uh, turn up and take one basis in some, I suppose, in some ways Aside from the uh, somewhat barren roads, the videos that I've seen. Oh, no, second. The videos that I've seen of the real. Nächste Station Handelstraße. Umsteigemöglichkeit zu den Buslinien 39 und 69. Ausstieg in Fahrtrichtung rechts. On those videos I've seen on the real U-Bahn, um, and comparing them to how the route. Is depicted in Train Simulator. It's actually, it's actually very well done. Um, and indeed, the from what I've seen, again comparing the in-game sounds to the real or to the real footage, uh, these trains uh, do sound very much like the real thing. If anything, it's more like it. There's certainly a lot more accurate than I think what the Deutsche Bahn BR218 will ever be. And if you don't know what the uh, BR218 is, that's a that's a classic German diesel hydraulic locomotive. That I'm only guessing here, but just from the way it looks, uh, it um, it looks like it was built by Krauss Maffei, if I'm pronouncing that right. Although, if anything, I'm probably not. <laughs> also, I've noticed this is the first station on our run that's got staggered platforms. You don't see that too often on this network. Um. The other good thing about this route is that uh, it includes, it's not like what Dovetail Games seem to do every single time they make something for TSW where they always chop off sections of the route that don't make any sense to chop off and always end up leaving it very short, boring and linear. <coughs> Harlem Line. Uh, Harlem Line, in case you didn't get it the first time. Nächste Station, Fritz Tarnostraße. And uh, in this case, this is this is this route is incredibly non-linear, and it actually includes the entirety of the Frankfurt U-Bahn network. So, like the entirety of all nine lines, as well as uh, three different types of uh, EMUs. That being the somewhat old and I think now retired U3. Then this 
U, then the U4, which I think dates back to like the late 90s or early 2000s, and then the U5, which is uh, that's from two, that's I think that dates back to 2008 at the earliest. But I think in terms of what rolling stock runs on the route in real life, I think the U5 is now the dominant motive power, and you'll see that on every single line. But the U4s, I believe, they only run, they only run uh, the f on the four lines out of Sudbahnhof. And I'm not sure what, well actually no, because I remember seeing, again, some real videos. I think it was like some dr like a driver's eye view or something, was I think someone would have uh, sat, I don't know, here or something, and then just had a camera pointing forward. Then recorded the whole journey from that sort of perspective. That was like, that was actually one where a U4 ran on line U5. And, uh, but yeah, normally, uh, normally the U4 units don't run on, on any other routes than U1 through, through to U3 and U8 and U9. Speaking of U4s, here comes another one. Or is that... Oh no, that is a U4. Where's that going? <sighs> Couldn't read it properly, but I'm I'm guessing that was a U2 service to Gonsenheim. Nächste Station, Dorbusch, Hessischer Rundfunk. Umsteigemöglichkeit zu den Buslinien 34 und 64. Ausstieg in Fahrtrichtung rechts. And this is, a, as I alluded to earlier, this is the the last uh, overground station on the journey. Also, this line, that that junction that we just passed, where that line curved off to the left, if memory serves, that is a connection with U5. So theoretically, you could have trains stationed at that depot back in Hedenheim, and then allocate those units to run on line U5 with, that, with the use of that connection. Because it joins up with U5 at uh, at the intersection where trains coming up from the Hauptbahnhof have to make an incredibly sharp right-hand turn going no faster than 15 kilometers an hour into, I think it's uh, Marbachweg slash Sozialzentrum station. Right, what does this say on this? Hessische Rundfunk. I don't know what that means, perhaps unsurprisingly. Right, this, this is obviously another service, and oh, this one, this lot's going to Gonsenheim. It's like the what I thought was the destination of the previous service. Now, uh, I think once from this point on, it actually we actually start using uh, color light signals. That's the other thing I've just realised I've forgotten to mention about the about this U-bahn is the signalling. It actually differs depending on wh uh, what section you're in. So there's initially, well, I think for these for the section that we've just been running on, you get these sorts of, I don't know what type of signals they are, but um, the way it works is that uh, that line, that's ver that white line, that's vertical mean, when it's when the line is clear, and then I think it angles either to the left. It's meant to angle either to the left or to the right, depending on which way a point is set if the signal is even next to a set of points in the first place. And then I think if it's uh, if it's horizontal, then that means it's it's red. I, I think that's how it works. And then I think starting from here we've got what look, just look like conventional, well semi, basically conventional colour light signals. Go in the underground. I wonder what it would be like to ride on the U-Bahn in real life, especially like with what these sections where they transition from, and where they will essentially surface or go underground. Nächste Station: Miguel Adikes Allee, Polizeipräsidium. Umsteigemöglichkeit zu den Buslinien 32 und 64. Ausstieg in Fahrtrichtung rechts. Indeed, now that we're underground, I've uh, shut the windscreen wipers off. 
what's the point in using the, the wipers when you're below the when you're underground and you have no chance of getting the windscreen wet? Come to think of it, um, I didn't notice like from whilst playing World of Subways. <coughs> I didn't notice it while playing World of Subways 2, but I'm not sure if that particular train in Berlin uh, has windscreen wipers or not. I mean, I think um, whilst Line U7, which is the one that's represented in that game, is entirely underground, um, I, th I think there are still other lines. I think maybe U1 or U6. No, definitely U2, uh, that at least have some sections where they're above ground. And um, actually, come to think of it, now, well, I did the other day. I did record a couple. Yeah, uh, past couple of weeks at least, I have recorded um, some. Well, well, a couple of World of Subways two videos, and I'll. I'm just making notes to put a link to one of them in the top right corner, although it is reasonably long, and there's um, no commentary in that instance, because it would be like this. News um, station. Holzhausenstraße, Unicampus, West End. Umsteigemöglichkeit zur Buslinie 36. Ausstieg in Fahrtrichtung rechts. It would, because I think if I did do commentary for those uh, World of Subways 2 videos, it would essentially be like what I'm having to do today, where I'm having, where I'm having to stop talking every time the announcements, or every time I have to play the announcements. Station is of course Holzhausenstrasse. Uh, now I believe Strasse is the German word for street. Now, considering how many other trains we've seen going the opposite direction to us, I would have thought that there'd be loads of them going into Südbahnhof. And yet, from what I've noticed, we haven't had any cautionary signals. Right, there's H3 marker. These numbers, or these markers with like, the H and a, and a number from 1 to 4, uh, they, those are like stop markers and um, it's essentially, uh, that sounds like the other train heading off, and essentially what it is, is like you have to, depending on the length of the train, you have to stop, you have to try and stop at these specific markers, and this H3 one that I've attempted to stop at, although I think I've just about missed it, is uh, is for six car trains because it's of, the numbers are not referring to the number of coaches but ref rather the number of units and typically I think line U1 at least uses a six car consists but some lines I think I think maybe mainly just U2 and U4 also ha occasionally run uh, eight car consists so that like the longest trains that you could get on the U-Bahn. Indeed, I think um, during the week U4 uh, solely uses solely eight car consists. Well, I think U2 only ever uses trains that long like during the morning and evening peak. Plenty of lag and all. Well, I think in this instance it's probably just tile loading. This is actually one of my least favourite stations on the route because it's uh, because of this rather these rather ugly green walls. Now I'm trying to get oh a bit too early for the H3 marker. This is uh, kind of like what they have on the Berlin U-Bahns line U7, where at each station they've got markers along the platform saying with like the numbers two, four, or six on them. Except in that instance, it, d those markers do refer to the number of coaches. But I've, the only times I've ever tried driving World of Subways 2, um, I've always been in a six car consist. Because with that game, I, when I drive in that game, I always, I always just prefer to only cover the. F um, to do a service over the full length of the route rather than just a short, uh, shorter one because I think it's only the shorter form services where you get the uh, two or four car consists 
I think when you do the full run from Ratash Bandel to Rudo, that's always a six car contest. Nächste Station, Eschenheimer Tour. Umsteigemöglichkeit zur Buslinie 36. Ausstieg in Fahrtrichtung rechts. Now I'm not entirely sure why there's this reversing siding here. Although one time when I was looking at like PDF timetables to, for, to use to make scenarios for this route, it did show that there was like there was an early morning it was like U U1 or U2 service that started here at Eschenheimer Tour and was essentially one of the shortest individual services that you could take on the U-Bahn. And yeah, despite the somewhat monotonous nature of the services, there are some of them that are quite, uh, that are d a bit unique and different from the others. For example, on uh, line U4, actually, let's have a look at this map if we can read it. On U4, which is, yeah, this pink line through here, so it's, it's so all services on U4 cover the section from Bockenheimer Warte to Sekbacher Landstrasse, but I think it I think there's only like every 15 or 20 minutes a service act would act will actually continue all the way to Ankheim, and so the services that only terminate at, at Sekbacher Landstrasse are the only regular services on the Frankfurt U-Bahn that are entirely underground. Because as we've seen with this journey on U1, it's um, all the lo all just about all the regular services, as I said, except for that one, the shorter U4, uh, do have some underground sections. Indeed, uh, U9 is um, another reason why U9 is kind of an odd one out is because it's um, not only is it the only line on the network that doesn't go into the centre of Frankfurt, but it's also the the one with the shortest underground section because the only underground station on U9 is Nordvest Centrum which was the, if you remember, that was the third station we stopped at after leaving Ginheim and I think there's over, I think in total there's 12 stations on uh, U9 So this is one of those major interchange stations where you connect with, uh, where, as I was saying earlier, you can connect with the S-Bahn lines, like mainly S1 to S6, and lastly S8 and S9. Now the weird thing with this uh, passenger system on the U-Bahn, or like the doors at least, it's not like... Uh, just about every other train or like locomotive hauled consist in the game where you can just press T to open the doors. No, in this case you have to press specific nut, uh, the O key to open the right hand side and U to open the left hand side. And then you press I to close both sides. And I th as I think I might have just proven, you can still just press the T key and uh, then that but that will get the passengers moving. Right, so now we're getting relatively close to the southern end of the line with only two more intermediate stops. Now, what is interesting is that, what's curious is that um, Schweizerplatz and Südbahnhof, I think they're the only stations on this whole route, uh, on this whole route of U1, where the uh, platforms are actually on the left hand side of the train. Uh, it, I think that's the sort of arrangement with island platforms and underground stations is more common I think on lines U4, uh, U5, U6 and U7 which if anything I think are more interesting than uh, U1 through to U3 and U8 um, just do the again. Wait, what? Well, I screwed that up initially. So geht zu den Straßenbahnlinien 11 und 12. Ausstieg in Fahrtrichtung rechts. And this uh, Willy, Brand, Willy Brand Platz is actually the, f well for U5 at least, and indeed U4, uh, it's the first station out of, the uh, uh, first station east of the Hauptbahnhof. And um, I find it quite curious that uh, 
despite being like the main se- the main station in the city, that um, Frankfurt Hauptbahnhof is only served by two of the U-Bahn lines. Come to think of it, I wonder how many uh, of the Berlin U-Bahn lines serve their s- serve their Hauptbahnhof. Because I'm pretty sure U7 doesn't. And I think the platforms for U4 and U5 are either above or below the or the platforms that we're at now. And yeah, you can just see from this 2D map, like just how non-linear the route really is. Now, here, although here's something a bit odd, this great big missing gap between Ginheim and Bockenheim Avata, which I should add is prototypical, because I think I think Ginheim was meant to be. Or the line was meant to be extended from Ginheim further down towards the city, hence why it d- essentially does this massive horseshoe or curve. It's like Hugelstrasse and then Ginheim. Essentially, if you wanted to go from Hugelstrasse to Ginheim, you'd probably just, I don't know, get a bus or walk, because it wouldn't make sense to get the U Bahn when it takes such an indirect route. And down here is uh, Sudbahnhof, which is another connection with the main line. And uh, I believe it's also the furthest south on the U-Bahn. Because I think between... I think it's between... Hold on, let's just look at this map. Uh, where are we? Oh, yeah, as I thought, it's between... Yeah, as the map shows, it's between Willybrandplatz and Schweizerplatz, where we actually descend quite significantly and go under the, uh, the, river, the river mine. Indeed, if you look just there, you can just see how severe the gradient is. And I think that spot where it briefly hits 1 in 17 is possibly the steepest the steepest incline of the whole of the U-Bahn. Nächste Station, Schweizerplatz, Museumsufer. Umsteigemöglichkeit zu den Straßenbahnlinien 15 und 16. Ausstieg in Fahrtrichtung Linz. Now, I've noticed that as we now seem to be getting away from most of the route and therefore a lot of the detail, I think the frame rate's picked up a little bit. Although that's not saying much. Now this station, the Schweizerplatz, well it's not necessarily this one, but primarily like Alta Opa or West End on lines U6 and U7. Uh, these ones remind really do remind me of um, of like World of Subways 2 and those U-Bahn stations in Berlin, except I think from memory, in the case of line U7, uh, on that Berlin U-Bahn again, not the one in Frankfurt, um, just about every station is, um, I think every station on that line in particular is, uh, well nearly every station just has a basic island platform where we have to exit on the right. Now one thing I've never known, I've never really understood with um, German railways is why they always run on the right hand side because it's it's not because in New Zealand and in the U and like the UK for example the trains all uh, all do left hand running and I think even on the Berlin U-Bahn that that uses right hand running as well floor it. What? Screw it. And even though, so, of course, you can just see there, there's a siding just past the Sudbahnhof station, or the platforms at least, and um, that's like the reversing sidings. It's not like Ostbahnhof where the U6 trains have to change direction while still on the platform. Nächste Station, Sudbahnhof. Fahrt Ende, bitte aussteigen. Umsteigemöglichkeit zu den Regional- und Fernzügen, zu den S-Bahnlinien S3 bis S6, zu den Straßenbahnlinien 14 und 16, zu den Buslinien 45, 47, 48, 61, sowie zu den Regionalbussen. Yes, so as I was saying, with the uh, with Ostbahnhof, which is the terminus of U6, that's a curious one because it's, I believe it's the only one of these underground termini where 
there are no reversing sidings and the trains just have to uh, change direction or the drivers just have to change ends while they're still on the platform and so uh, yeah this is uh, Ostbahnhof so you can see what I mean um, whereas uh, as we can see with Sudbahnhof we've got these uh, reversing sidings and I guess in the case of this particular line it would make sense because you wouldn't because given how many given the fact that there are four lines that run through the station uh, you wouldn't expect it would be completely uh, complete madness to try and have um, or to try and have a train just simply reverse while still on the platform and um, I think even with uh, Bockenheim Avata and the U4 platforms there, whilst it is a terminus and only served by one line, I think the service on U4 is uh, so busy that uh, you couldn't just you you would need the reversing sidings to make space for the or to make way for other trains needing to use the platform. Oh, I wonder which siding we're going into. It's interesting how they've, how they've ended up with uh, three reversing sidings here, and um, I always like how you can easily access them from either of the two lines. Although this is certainly some pretty sharp curves, I would think. I can see that the uh, speed limit is 25 kilometers an hour, but I'm trying not to... Go. I mean, there's probably not much point in traveling at the speed limit. And um, just thinking back to the Berlin system again, the reversing sidings that you get on that network are like what you s uh, arranged in a similar way to what you see at uh, Bockenheim Avata at the end of U4. But um, now that it'll be... it won't be long before the scenario ends, so... Now that we're in the uh, reversing sidings and at the literally at the southern limit of the U-Bahn system, I think I'll take this opportunity to say thank you very much for watching and and I hope you've enjoyed the and I hope you've enjoyed revisiting the Frankfurt U-Bahn as much as I have. All right, take care, everyone, and I guess I'll see you next time.